Help me in these I Now, I really don't know, Sister Amy, what heaven's going to be like. I like to imagine. This evening, some of the kids were sitting here, Mahala and James and some of them, they said, Preacher, now, how many is familiar with wallabies over in North, or North Carolina? <laughs> North Johnson City. They may have one in North Carolina. But it's a place where you can take your kids uh, and uh, they've got them inflatable slides and bouncy houses and stuff like that. And you can uh, jump around and have a big time. And they said, Preacher, do you think there'll be a wallabies in heaven? <laughs> and I said, well, if there is, it'll be the best one we've ever been to. So, uh, but I, I, I love the heart of a child and the mind of a child. And they're pure and they're innocent. And, uh, uh, but uh, I get to think about heaven and what would it be like. And I don't know. I, I, sometimes, sister, let me, uh, I tell you, let me pray and you can be seen. Lord, we love you. Help us tonight. Lord, you, 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 you've given me a, a message from heaven. And Lord, uh, I just will be a help to you people. Uh, help us take this, use it, and apply it to our lives. We'll praise you and love you and thank you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let you be seen. Come on, talk to you a minute right before I read the scripture. But, you know, I've always said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Noah about the ark. And I'm going to ask Jonah about what it was like to be in the belly of a whale. And I'm going to, I'm going to see David, uh, his slingshot, what it took to life. And I'm going to ask him all about those things. But to be honest, we may, we may not think of those things when we get to glory. We may not be interested in those things. Maybe we will. Maybe when we get to heaven, we'll know all about it. I don't know. But uh, I do believe that we'll see the saints of God from the Word of God. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that day. Not only the loved ones that I've known in my life that I'll see one day, but those that I've read about and studied about and I've preached about, I want to meet them. But more than that, I want to see Jesus. It's like that song we sing, I bow on the knees and cry holy. I sing uh, Mark, Luke, and Timothy, but I said... I want to see Jesus. He's the one who died for me. What a day that's going to be. Praise the Lord. All right. In Luke 19, the Bible says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. And he could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before, he climbed up in a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him and he said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. He made haste and he came down and received him joyfully. When they saw him, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be the guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and he said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said to him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is the son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Now, we're going to come back to that here in just a minute. Now, I'd like you to turn with me to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel, chapter number 18. 2 Samuel, chapter number 18. We see Zacchaeus climbing up into a tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And he was out on the limb. This is the thought of... Uh, this is the thought God gave me. Three men out on a limb. Have you ever heard that saying, oh, they're just out on a limb? Usually it's an expression of stepping out by faith. But that's the thought I want to use tonight. Three men out on a limb. Now, 2 Samuel chapter number 18 at verse number 9, the Bible says, And Absalom met the servants of David, and Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick bowls of the great oak, and his head caught hold of the oak and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth and the mule that was under him went away and a certain man saw it and told Joab and said behold I saw Absalom hanged 
in an oak. And Joab said unto the man that told him, And behold, thou sawest him, and why didst thou not smite him there to the ground? And I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girdle. And the man said unto Joab, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in mine hand, yet would I not put forth mine hand against the king's son. For in uh, our hearing, the king charged thee, and Abishai, uh, Idai, saying, Beware, beware that none touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise, I should have false falsehood uh, against mine own life, for there is no matter hid from the king. And, boy, that right there is a thought. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say that. For there is no matter hid from the king, and thou thyself wouldst have set thyself against me. Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee. And he took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. I want to say this. The Word of God is a whole library. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you want suspense, thriller, romance, uh, war, if you, any kind of book you think of, you can find it in the Word of God. That's the truth. And then verse 15, And ten young men that bear Joab's armor compassed about and smote Absalom and slew him. I began to have these thoughts about Absalom. I, I, I studied about Absalom. But uh, if, if I could give you a point here, I would say Absalom was reaping what he had sowed. He was reaping what he sowed. Number one, one thing I saw about Absalom is how he squandered. I've been thinking about blessings a lot. And how he squandered blessings. Now here he is, a favored son of King David. And he was the third born of David. And he, he was in line to one day become king. He was heir to the throne. And he was blessed. God smiled on his life. Some of the passages of Scripture talk about how handsome, how handsome he was. How popular he was with the people. So popular that at one time he came against his dad David and divided the people. A lot were with Absalom and going for him and others stayed with David. And then, uh, not only that, but he was beloved of the Father. The Bible says in verse 33, very familiar passage of Scripture, very popular verse when we think about Absalom often you think of this verse 2 Samuel 18 33 and the king was much moved he King David has received the news of Absalom and the king was much moved and he went up to the chamber over the gate and he wept and as he went thus he said oh my son Absalom my son my son Absalom I, I uh, would God I had died for thee, O Absalom, my son, my son. Now you've got to think about the love that a father has for a son. Absalom wanted him dead. Absalom wanted his throne. Absalom wanted David out of the picture. And even though he ran him out of Jerusalem, you remember how David fled Jerusalem for a little while and the people got to aching. Their hearts, the Bible says, ached for the king. And we see where one of the servants said, the king has been gone for so time, some time and there's no talk of us bringing him back. I begin to think about that. And I love how just phrases will stick out. You know, Jesus has been gone for 2,000 years. And now I know we talk about it here. We mention it in Sunday school. We sing about it. We talk about it. The deacons mention it in their deacons' prayer and in their devotions. We preach about it. We, this is a church and a people that talk about the King's return. And we're looking forward to the glad day, that moment when Jesus busts through the eastern sky and comes to take the church. But in the world today, there's not a whole lot of talk about the King coming back. A lot of folk ain't wanting to bring the king back. And the reason a lot of folk ain't talking about bringing the king back is they're not ready to meet the king. And it's just like, I, I don't have time to preach this, but when the king comes back, there's several uh, of the former servants of David. Some are former military. Some worked within the house of David. And they were so afraid. One man, for instance, that cursed David and threw stones at David. Uh, he thought David was dead. And when David came back, 
into Jerusalem and cross Jordan, that man was afraid. And he come to David and he began to apologize to the king because he thought he was going to be beheaded. But King David uh, poured grace out on him. And that's how our Lord is. He pours grace out on us even when we don't deserve it. But here he squanders his blessings. But then secondly, he is, and I'm going to move through these first two real quick. Uh, then he squandered his privileges. Like I said before, he was a leader in the army. He could have had anything. I mean, if his daddy, the king, could do it for him, could get it for him, he could have had all that he wanted. But he squandered the privileges. Now, we've been given privileges by the Father. Privileges to worship, read the Word of God. And I know I'm going to sound very redundant. It seems like a lost sister, Helen, I've mentioned about reading the Word of God. And I, I want us to think about how precious it is for us to live here in America. We have freedom. We don't have to hide. We don't have to look in, in, in secret for places to worship. We don't have to smuggle in Bibles into our country. You go visit China, you go, I've got a, a, a I've kind of been working out with a guy that's getting ready to take a missionary journey to Korea. He's going over there to train in the martial arts, but he's also going on a missionary journey. And he's talking about sneaking. I, I don't know any other way to put it. Do you call sneaking or what? But he's going to go in through North Korea. Now, he's allowed to go into South Korea and bring the Bibles. But for whatever reason, he's going to go into North Korea and smuggle in those Bibles. And then he said, the problem's not in the airport, but it's when they go from the north into the south. He said, Richard, you've got to pray for us. He said, we're going to be wrapping them up like gifts. He said, I'm kind of wrestling with inside on, uh, on his line or something like that. I said, brother, I believe God knows your heart. You're trying to get the word of God to people. And so, and Brother Greg and I heard a powerful testimony by Dr. Ralph Sexton. He was talking about going over to Korea to preach. And he said, I believe this one church, what Brother Greg had like 14,000 members. He said, what they're doing over there in South Korea is what we did back in the 30s and 40s and 50s. They're not locked in their cars. They're not locked in their homes. Uh, everybody feels safe. They've got the windows rolled up. People are walking to church down the street singing the songs of Zion. And said when they get to the church, people have been praying for hours. And Dr. Sexton, Sister Patsy, asked that one uh, pastor of the church. He said, well, what are y'all praying about? Are you praying for revival? Are you praying for the church? Are you praying for needs? He said, don't you know, Pastor Sexton? He said, we're praying for America. Korea is praying for America. Said because if America loses their freedom and turns their back on, on God, the God we serve, we're in trouble. We need America to be free. We need America to stand with us and to stand with God and for God and the people of God. And so we, we live in the greatest country. We've got the Word of God. And any moment we choose, we can pick up a Bible and read the Word of God. But so often, we leave it on the, the, the nightstand or we leave it on the coffee table and they gather dust. Sometimes, yeah, now this may, this may strike a nerve. But I always get tickled as I go through the church house at the church. Now, I know maybe you've got a Bible in every vehicle and you've got a Bible in every room of your house and all, but sometimes I'll find Bibles lying around the church. Now, you say, well, preacher, I've got one that'll live here and I've got plenty at home, but what if that was the only one you had? You know, or does every Bible you have, are they all broken in? Do we read out of all our, our, our Bibles? And so we get busy throughout that. Well, I gotta get up, I gotta get the kids ready, I gotta get myself ready, we gotta get breakfast. Then we're gonna hit all these red lights, and then there's traffic. I mean, yeah, I know what morning school traffic's like. You go drop the kids off at uh, Happy Valley Elementary, and then there's a line that goes about 15 miles, seems like, to get up to the middle school. And so I know, you say, I gotta get the kids, and there's traffic, and I gotta get to work, and all that stuff, and, and uh, I'll, I'll read the Word of God. Lunch break. And then sometimes you'll have somebody come up and say, You want to eat lunch with me? You want to go out and eat? And you get to talk about other things. And so you didn't get to have your daily devotion at lunch. And then, of course, after school, got to get the homework, got to get supper, got to get the lunch, got to get baths, got to do all that stuff. Got to, maybe you have to brain work home with you. You got to get it finished for the day. And then you say, Now's my time for the 
devotion and I'm going to get my Bible and I'm going to I'm going to get in the recliner and I'm going to turn the TV off and the uh, uh, yeah I'm going to turn the TV off somebody turn the lights off on this I'm going to turn the TV off and I'm going to just turn the lamp, lamp on and turn the the kids are in bed and all that and I'm going to I'm just going to read the Bible <laughs> yeah. how many is guilty and then oh and uh, I'll lay here in bed and, and I'll read the Bible. And before you know it, <laughs> and you're drooling on the pages of the Bible. And I at it. And so we've been given a privilege to read the Word of God. But we're not reading the Word of God, maybe. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But think about that. And then prayer. Do you really talk to God like He wants us to talk to Him? I mean, I can't stress this enough. It seems like the last few messages I've preached about praying and reading the Word of God and, and faithfulness to God. He's got it on my heart for a reason. But oh, we squander the privileges. Worship. But do we worship like He wants us to worship? Do we praise Him like we've been allowed to praise Him? Do we spend enough time in the Word and witness and tell others that's something to think about? We're children of God. Children of the King, heirs and joint heirs. We've been made princes and princesses under the God of glory. But so often we squander our privileges. Then I think about how he squandered the birthright. Absalom messed up. And one of these, one day he's going down the road on a mule. I knew there'd be a day, I'm not walking down them steps no more. I knew there'd be a day I'd slip on that. And uh, he's riding down the road on the mule. And see that long flowing hair. Now it, it, it was different for a woman. It's different for a man. <coughs> that hair flowing was a sign of pride. And a sign of power. And Aslan got his hair caught on the limb of an oak. And was hung up in that tree. And then another soldier come by and put three darts right into his heart. Oh... It's written what he said. And then I think about another man who was out on the limb was Judas in Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. And you all know the story about Judas. Judas Iscariot. Matthew 27, And when the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders and the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. And then Judas, which had betrayed him, then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I sinned, and that I betrayed that innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to, to that. He cast down the pieces of silver in the temple. He departed and he went. And he hanged himself. So Absalom was reaping what he sowed. And then Judas, he was rejecting the Savior. He rejected the call of God. If you go all the way to Matthew chapter number 11, you'll see where the Bible speaks in Matthew 11 at the beginning how all the disciples were there. And Jesus was teaching and preaching and doing miracles, making parables, telling stories. And the Bible says, in Matthew 11, 28, Come and be all you that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So Judas hears the call. He hears the call to come to the Lord, but yet is he rejected in his heart. And then not only that, but he hears the command of God. Several times when they're out on the sea, Several times when he, for instance, he tells them to go in John chapter number 6, the boy had the five loaves of bread and the two fish. And after they feed the 5,000 men and probably more than that, maybe 20, 30, 40,000 people, they take the remainder and they put it in a basket and they've got 12 baskets full. And, and there is Judas. He's partaking in that. In John chapter number 11, he is at the very tomb of land. Call Lazarus up from the grave. He hears the call of God. He hears 
the commands of God, but he rejects the call, and he rejects the command, and then he rejects the Christ. He comes to Christ in the garden. And you've heard me say this, as Jesus is praying and the sweat becomes great drops of blood and the blood's going down his face and Jesus comes up and he gives him a kiss on the cheek. The blood touches his lip, but it never made it to his heart. I believe, I believe in one way, you know, in Revelation chapter number 3, verse 20, the Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice, let him open up. And I'll come into him, fellowship with him, and sup with him. I believe that moment that Judas kissed Jesus on the cheek, he shut the door to heaven. He rejected the door to heaven. Yeah, because he, he could have been just like Peter. He could have repented. He could have turned it around, but he didn't. He went and hanged himself in a tree. He was hanging from a limb. But then I see Zacchaeus, how he accepted the Savior. And this is what I want to primarily preach from. How this was a third man out on the limb. I love studying about Zacchaeus. One of the things I got to study was how there in Jericho, that was the smallest city. Still to this day, it's still the smallest city in the world. Jericho is the smallest city. The smallest place that we buy people. So Jesus goes to the smallest place. And then Zacchaeus was a wee little person. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, Jesus went to the smallest place and he went to the smallest person. I'm glad we got a Jesus today, a Savior today, that'll still go to the smallest place. He'll go to the place where nobody else will go, those forsaken places, those places where people feel like they're at the bottom of the barrel, wasting life, down to nothing, nobody, forsaken by all. Jesus still goes to the little places. And praise God, He still seeks out the little people. So the rich man 
had to come up the poor man's tree to get to Jesus. The sycamore tree is a picture of humility. So Zacchaeus had to humble himself to see the Lord. And then you know what? Not only do we see the tree, but you know there's an adversary in that sycamore tree. There's mulberries in the sycamore tree. It's part of the mulberry family. And so there is a there is an enemy that gets up in that tree and that's a snake. And sometimes what takes place is when it comes to... Uh, now all the branches are thorns. And then Brother Jason, there's also leaves. And leaves are in the shape of hearts. And then the blossoms of the flowers are in the shape of leaves. And I got to thinking about that. Praise God. I preached a message one time on the kisses of Calvary. And here's Zacchaeus. Alright? He, he's a rich man, climbs up the poor man's tree to get to the Lord. And he's up there hanging out on the limb. And, and here he is surrounded by pictures of love. You said, preacher, what do you mean? Well, there's leaves that are shaped like hearts. Greater love hath no man than this than to lay down a life for his friend. For God so loved the world, God committed His love toward us. And so He sees a picture of love. Then there's lips. Oh, the kisses of Calvary. Amen. And then He said, well, preacher, what about them thorns? How, how can those be a picture of love? Well, Jesus took the crown of thorns for you and me. And then let me tell you what else will take place. The berries are red. And the, the berries will begin to fall and they'll hit those branches. And the only thing I can figure out, Brother Ross, is those berries can hit the thorns. And the thorns pierce the skin of the berry. And the berry oozes out that red substance. And it covers the tree. And not only is it red, but it's oily. And so here's a snake trying to get up to the berries. And the thorn has just pierced the skin and shed this red ointment and this gel and it is oozed down on that tree. And so when the serpent tries to get to the top of the tree and tries to get to the blessing, it came because of that red substance, because of that oil, that gel. I begin to think about how you look up at Calvary, you look up at the cross, at the tree that Jesus was hung on.
the goodness of God, the mercies of God. We can, can I just be honest? We can. Do, do we thank Him every day? Well, preacher, I sit down at the supper table and at breakfast and I got my waffle and my coffee or I got my toast and my coffee and I got my oatmeal and my coffee or my cereal and my coffee and I say, Lord bless this food for the nursing of my body. But can I just testify, I'm like, you know what, every day, I don't do it every day, Brother Bo. I'm just going to testify. I mean, every day I pray. But every day I don't thank Him for two good legs and two good feet and two good arms and two good hands and two good eyes and two good ears and a mouth that gets me in trouble and a nose that can smell that good food and the ability to, to you know, He's given us health. Well, preacher, I've got some health issues. Yeah, but we can all look around and there's somebody worse off than us. There's somebody worse off than us. You know, we can have issues at the home, things messing up here and things tearing up there and things breaking up there and all that stuff. But you know what? I stayed warm last night. And as I got warm through the night, you know what I was able to do? Go turn that heat off and go turn the air on. And when I woke up about 3 o'clock this morning freezing to death, I went, I cut the air off and I went and put that heat back on. Well, preacher, if you keep on going back and forth, you mess it up. Guess what? I've got blankets. Go in that closet and I've got throws and I've got quilts and I've got blankets and I've got comforters and I've got, yeah. And then if I keep freezing, I'll go take them off the girls' beds and cut them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. They stay warm. I'm just kidding. But, but boy, he's blessed us. Yeah. Went to the closet this morning. I thought, now what? What am I going to wear today? <laughs> Didn't we all have that? What? What? What dress? What? What pants suit? What suit? What shirt? What tie? What blouse? What? What? What pair of shoes? This shoe? These shoes match this pocketbook, and I've got ten pocketbooks that go with these thirty pair of shoes. That's how God's called it. But then I've got, a, I mean, I've got watches and I can say, what watch and what, what should I mean, boy, we've been spoiled and rotten by God. Amen. But every day do we thank Him. Do we thank Him. And then I think about Jesus, how He rejected Christ. He was called to be a disciple. And even though, even though He was following, you know, the Bible says He followed a follower. He followed a far off. You know what that means? Never really fully committed. Never really fully committed. And if we're not careful, we'll just follow Him afar off, in a distance, not fully committed. But I'm going to be like Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, he climbed out on a limb. He got out there. He got out there for the Lord. He wanted to see the Lord for who He was. I want to get a closer look at Him tonight. Amen? Tomorrow I want to see Him better than I did today. Praise the Lord one of these days. I hope it'd be all right with me, Brother Craig, if tonight was tonight. Wouldn't it be all right, Brother R.L., when we woke up in the morning, when we got the newspaper, and maybe got you a cup of coffee and sat on the porch? Sister Patsy, what, what, what direction does your house face? Is that? Southeast. Southeast. I know, I know the sun comes up in the east, but you and Brother Jack could be out there on visitation. Be out there looking through them trees and through the woods. And as the S-U-N comes up in the morning, the S-O-N could come back. I want the Lord to help us have desire that. Do we look for That's another thought. Do we look for Him every day? Do we look for Him every day? Do we wake up? I want to get to the place where I wake up and as soon as my feet hit the floor, I say, boy, this could be the day that Jesus comes back. This could be the day that He calls us home. Let's not squander the, the blessings of God. Let's not reject the blessings of God. Let's get out there where He is. Let's take it all in. Let's see for who He is and what He does and what He gives to us. Let's be thankful for it. Amen.
You know, Zacchaeus, he was so thankful for what the Lord did. He said, if I've cheated anybody, if I've done anybody wrong, he said, I'll give it back fourfold. I believe he was thankful for a second chance. Amen? Amen. I really do. Praise God. Let's all stand together. Get down there and die close. That's just a simple call tonight. What are we doing with the blessings of God? Well, we could have went a bunch of different directions tonight. Boy, He's blessed us. Lord, we love You. Lord, help us to acknowledge the goodness of God and the grace of God and the blessings of God. Lord, help us to never take for granted Your mercy and Your grace and Your blessings. And Lord, help us to never squander Help us to, Lord, help us to never reject you. Your call, your command, your crime for us to do more. Lord, help us to never reject Christ, our Savior. Lord, I want to be like Zacchaeus. I want to see Jesus for who he is because I'm thankful that no matter the condition, the crowd, the circumstance, the criticism, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. That we can get a glimpse of the Master. Where I pray, God, that tonight we can get a little glimpse of you. We can see you for who you are. And thank you for what you do. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus gets a hold of us, it makes a difference. It makes a difference.